Hello, uh, in uh, this lecture we are going to discuss about the dermatoscopic criteria of uh, melanoma. It's true that dermoscopy radically changed the way uh, we, uh, we understand melanoma morphology and in fact it radically modified the, uh, the imaging correspondence of the word melanoma. Imagine that 30 years ago uh, the correspondence uh, to an image of the word melanoma was something like this, of course without the dermatoscopic image, just the clinical one. So what we would today uh, characterize as an advanced melanoma. This was the correspondence, uh, a tumor which is uh, um, which displays multiple colors, ulcerates, bleeds. Uh, that was what melanoma meant. Okay. Of course, with time, um, especially with the ABCD clinical rule, this improved quite a lot, but it dramatically changed with dermoscopy because for us today, this is a clear-cut melanoma. This is not a difficult one. Uh, and uh, obviously, um, this is a much earlier stage as compared to the previous one. And even more impressively, with the improvement of our knowledge in, in dermoscopy, we are able today to connect the word melanoma with morphologic images like this one, uh, which, of course, from a macroscopic aspect is a tiny, not suspicious lesion, but dermatoscopically uh, it does fulfill the criteria we know to characterize melanoma. So, it's, uh, there is no doubt that dermoscopy made us able to observe, to detect the morphologic asymmetry of melanoma at an earlier stage, at a stage that clinically it does not yet fulfill the criteria uh, that we would like to see. So asymmetry of colors, asymmetry of structures, this is the main thing, the main morphologic criterion of melanoma. And of course, in addition to this, there is a list of features, a list of structures that today we know pretty well that they are strongly associated with melanoma. So when we see them present in a lesion, uh, each one of them, or more than one, even more, then uh, this is a strong prediction of, of melanoma. Now, we will go analytically in this criteria in the next uh, minutes, but before, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that in many of these criteria, if you look at their names, uh, you see two words. And the first one of the two words is always the word irregular or the word atypical, which means that obviously there is also a typical counterpart, a typical version of this criterion. No? So atypical network means that there is also a typical network. Irregular globules means that there are also regular globules. And of course, it's true. Now, this, this discrimination between typical and atypical or regular and irregular is sometimes very challenging eh? uh, and uh, this is uh, true for all these criteria that I, that I mentioned and here I would like to share with you something a conceptual point which in my opinion is very important and will help you very much so in this slide here we see some elementary structures. We see, for instance, a brown globule, a black globule, a brown dot, and a black dot. Now, can we assess uh, if this brown globule here is typical or atypical, or the black dot? Is it typical or atypical? The answer is that no way. We cannot. Why? Because the assessment of typical or atypical globules or dots depends on the relationship between the, between this globule with the remaining globules of the of the lesion this is what will define if the globules are typical or atypical let me show you a few more examples here you can see multiple brown globules 
Are they typical or atypical? Are they regular or irregular? They are regular. Why? Because they have the same color, brown, the same size, more or less the same diameter, and they are regularly distributed in the lesion. That's why they are regular globules. Okay? Or the next example, black globules, regular or not? Yes, regular. Why? For the same reasons as before. Next example, brown dots, regular or not? Yes, regular because they are, they are of the same size, same color and regular distribution. Okay? Now, if we look at this one here, the answer changes. Here, these globules are irregular. Why? Because we see globules of different diameter and this is what makes them irregular. Some are large, some are smaller, some are even smaller. Or in the next example, same diameter but different color and this makes them uh, irregular, the color difference. Or in the next example, same color, same diameter, but not regular distribution. You see how many globules are aggregated on the right part and very few on the left part. So irregular because of the distribution. So I'm trying to say that what makes each structure regular or irregular, typical or atypical, is not the structure itself, but the comparison between different areas of the same lesion. And this applies to all the criteria, uh, pr almost all the criteria of melanoma. So, atypical network, for instance, you see an atypical network on your left and compare it to the typical network on the right. What's the difference? The difference is that on the right, you see only one color, one, di one diameter of the holes and same thickness of the lines. Why? On the left hand side, you see a black network in the upper part and a light brown network in the lower part. And also much thicker lines in the upper part as compared to the lower part. And this difference between the upper part and the lower part is precisely what makes the network atypical. Okay? Look one more example. How many different types of network we see in this lesion? I would say three. Three. And that's why this network is atypical. If not, if you focused your attention only on the very black network and imagine that the rest of the lesion did, did not exist, then the network would be fine. Okay? Each one of these three networks would be fine if they did not coexist in the same lesion. It's the coexistence of different types of network that makes the network atypical. Again here, atypical. Why? Because there is a very black network with thick lines in the upper part of the lesion and then a completely different type of network in the remaining uh, parts of the lesion. That's why it's not typical. Okay? One more emphatic example. The network uh, is atypical only because we see a very light brown network in the lower part a black network in the center and the regular and the brown network uh, in the upper part. So three different colors. That's why the network is atypical. Okay. In contrast, here we see more or less the same type, the same color, the same thickness of lines, the same diameter of the holes. So it's okay. That's uh, the difference. One more example. This is okay. Uh, there is no problem because we see one color, one size one thickness of lines. Okay. So, with a similar concept, dots or globules, regular versus irregular. Regular on the right hand side. Why? Because you see only one color, brown, more or less one diameter and a reasonable distribution, a regular distribution. In this scenario, the distribution is peripheral. So you see globules at the periphery, but all over the periphery. Okay? In contrast, look now at the left hand side. Of course, there are globules, but some of them are brown, some of them are black. There is a significant variability in the size. Look at some globules in the upper part are very large and some others are very, very small. And 
in addition there is a, a completely asymmetric distribution there are some areas without globules at all and some other areas with uh, aggregated globules and some other areas with peripheral globules so irregular okay one more example regular or not not irregular why because look at the color some are brown some are black look at the distribution it does not follow any reasonable rule one more example irregular why because the, these uh, brown and black dots are distributed in a crazy way without following any logic any any rule okay in contrast here we see only brown globules and there there is a rule and harmony in their distribution some of them are central there is also a ream of globules at the periphery but there is a harmony okay again peripheral globules but all over the periphery so there is a harmony again uh, in the distribution and of course only one color only one size so regular in contrast here of course cr crazy irregular globules brown black large and small irregularly distributed and one more comparative example irregular globules on the left regular globules on the right the same logic applies also for blotch what is a blotch a blotch is a black area a, a, a heavily pigmented area when should we characterize it as regular well easy to answer it's regular when it is in the center central blotch or if you like it would be regular if it would be all over the lesion okay but when it's eccentric like in the example on the left it's irregular okay one more example regular or not not it's eccentric irregular blotch suspicious uh, regular or not not it's eccentric again so suspicious the same logic also for streaks what are the streaks streaks are these radial peripheral lines okay uh, regular when when they are distributed all over the periphery irregular when they are seen only in one part of the periphery like in this example here because you can see streaks only on the right on the right part of the lesion you cannot see streaks on the left part so it's an irregular distribution irregular streaks one more example look at the streaks on the right hand side they are very large very long and on the left there is just one very very long streak but then no other streaks so irregular distribution and here is the comparison again uh, of irregular streaks on the left hand side versus uh, regularly distributed streaks all over the periphery on the right hand side regression this is another very important melanoma criterion very frequent melanoma criterion also here the rule of symmetry applies because regression might occur also in benign lesions including nevi but again here in nevi uh, even the regression process should follow some kind of logic some kind of, of, of rule for instance you see a little bit of regression in the center of the lesion on the right in contrast on the left you see that the upper part of the lesion has regressed the lower part of the lesion is still there so irregular asymmetric again the same logic speaking about regression i need to mention that regression as a procedure has two main stages of evolution the initial one uh, during which um, we see a lot uh, we see many numerous uh, melanos uh, melanophages uh, which dermatoscopically are seen, are seen as grey granules, this peppering, these small grey uh, dots, very small dots, granules. Uh, so this is the procedure of phagocytosis of melanin. These are white blood cells, macrophages, that, uh, that do this procedure of phagocytosis of, of melanin. And we see them dermatoscopically as grey gray dust gray gray granules okay and then in the end stage 
of the, of the, of the regression process, we see white color, which sometimes is simply depigmentation because the lesion disappeared after, after the regression process, or some other times it's not only depigmentation, but it's really a scar because there is fibrosis in the end of, of the regression process. Not always, but sometimes there is fibrosis. And when we see fibrosis, when we see this so-called scar-like depigmentation, then this is very highly suspicious for uh, melanoma. So, this is about regression. Look one more example. Uh, irregular re regression, not following any rule, not following any logic, because uh, you, if you see the regressed parts of the, of the lesion, then they are completely asymmetrically distributed, so suspicious for melanoma. One more example. Look, all the right part regressed and the left part is still there. So asymmetric regression again, uh, suspicious for melanoma. And we finish again with a comparative example, which is the good regression and which is the bad regression. I think that now we can say that the, the, ex the harmonic lesion is the one on the right because the regression occurs in the center and it respects somehow the harmony of the lesion while, while on the left the regression does not respect anything it, it occurs in a completely asymmetric way therefore this is uh, uh, the suspicious one then a few more uh, melanoma criteria which are easy to recognize because they are mainly seen in advanced melanoma, especially this one, the so-called blue-white veil, this combination of blue and white translucent color uh, is of course highly suspicious for uh, melanoma. Here, one more example. I don't think that I need to say much. It's quite straightforward uh, to, our, uh, uh, to our eyes. And of course it corresponds, it's seen to in advanced melanomas blue color means that there are melanocytes deep in the dermis so we are speaking about an advanced melanoma shiny white streaks is another clue that i would like to mention very very important uh, these structures can only be seen with polarized light i'm speaking about these uh, orthogonal short shiny lines uh, that you can see in some parts uh, of this lesion and this uh, feature does not have a benign counterpart so when we see it it's almost always uh, a, a red flag it's uh, suspicious for melanoma look here again white shiny streaks uh, in uh, in a melanoma uh, which is pigmented of course these white shiny streaks from a diagnostic perspective become even more relevant when present in amelanotic melanomas uh, but this is a topic for a different uh, for a different lecture and see here again by the way uh, the difference between polarized and non-polarized light so the left uh, the image on the left hand side is non-polarized and in the non-polarized you would characterize the central area as blue white veil okay precisely the same area with polarized light uh, uh, would be characterized as a blue-white veil or a blue structureless area with white shiny streaks. So white shiny streaks in a, in, uh, in a way, uh, white shiny streaks seen with polarized light are, would be expected to correspond to the blue-white veil with non-polarized light. This is also true especially for the main version of white shiny streaks. Look here again from a little bit of, for, uh, with a magnification, uh, the difference between polarized and non-polarized. One more example of these white shiny streaks. And finally, last criterion, atypical vessels. What do we mean uh, atypical vessels? Well, let's try to define atypical vessels as following. Vessels are atypical when they are polymorphous. What is polymorphous? Polymorphous means that within the same lesion I see more than one morphologic types together. Dotted vessels and linear vessels, glomerular vessels and, and arborizing vessels together. Okay, This is what makes them uh, atypical. P 
polymorphic, okay? Or, this is the first definition, and the second definition, which is uh, complementary to the first one, is the, de the, the detection of the so-called linear irregular vessels. I'm speaking about, uh, uh, for instance, this vascular structure, which is very highly convoluted, crazy ramifications, okay? Uh, linear irregular vessels are enough to characterize the vascular pattern as uh, atypical. Look here again, even more, look how much convoluted these, these vessels are. So crazily convoluted, linear irregular vessels, uh, atypical. Okay, that's it. These are the main melanoma criteria. Well, of course, today we have to add a few more because recently uh, a few additional um, uh, criteria have been validated as specific for melanoma and they are especially important for very early melanomas, melanomas in situ uh, or very early invasive melanomas. The most important of these new criteria is uh, this one, uh, the first one, uh, these irregular hyperpigmented uh, areas that you can see on the left, uh, on the left image. Uh, then angulated lines, which, is, which are quite similar to the rhomboidal structures of lentigo maligna. And finally, prominent skin markings. Let's see these criteria again one by one, starting with irregular hyperpigmented areas, which are uh, these small in size, darkly pigmented, almost black, uh, irregular in shape, of course, uh, areas of the lesion uh, that uh, very possibly correspond to the upward migration of melanocytes within the epidermis. That's why uh, they are black in color. And this phenomenon, this biologic phenomenon of upward migration is probably corresponds to uh, the so-called pagetoid spread that is an important uh, histopathologic criterion of melanoma. Here in this panel you can see multiple versions of, uh, of um, uh, these irregular hyperpigmented areas. Then the second criterion are the so-called angulated lines. Look at these polygons. Uh, they are quite similar to uh, the rhomboidal structures of Lendigo maligna. This is the initial study where this feature was described and uh, these are the angulated lines and these are the rhomboids of lentigo maligna. Look how similar they are and of course uh, these, uh, the angulated lines uh, are usually present in lentiginous melanomas. So probably we are speaking about the same feature. So probably these two names should be uh, united somehow. Angulated lines either on the face or on the trunk are suggestive of lentiginous uh, melanoma, usually at a very early uh, stage. And finally, prominent skin markings. I'm speaking about the, uh, the prominent hypopigmented creases of the skin that you can see in this example here. Uh, also, this is a clue, or even better in the next one, this one, you can see inside the lesion, this hypopigmented skin creases. Uh, this is a nice clue to remember, especially for the differential diagnosis between uh, in situ melanoma and nevus, not so much for the differential diagnosis from, from solar lendigo, because uh, similar hypopigmented creases might be present also in solar lendigo. We should keep it in mind. So I would say that the clue is that when we see this feature in a solitary lesion, then it might be suspicious. When we see it in multiple uh, lesions, that is not enough to characterize the lesion as suspicious because they might be solar lentigines. And in fact, in this study, uh, uh, when it comes to compare melanoma in situ with atypical nevi, uh, these two criteria that I just showed you, irregular hyperpigmented areas and prominent skin markings, were the, the only significant predictors of uh, melanoma. So, for instance, a melanoma in situ on the left with these irregular hyperpigmented uh, areas, in contrast to, to an atypical nevus with some focal hyperpigmentation, which, however, does not correspond to irregular structureless areas, but to, uh, to pigment network, to darker pigment network. Okay, 
That was it concerning the morphologic, dermatoscopic morphologic universe of melanoma. Thank you very much for your attention.